Hi, welcome. If you've been following along or you're in my class, you know that when it comes to rotor parameters, there's a ton of different formulas that we need to remember. So what we're gonna do in this really quick video is just build ourselves a really quick formula sheet so that we can quickly remember those formulas. Now, if I were you, I would grab some cue cards and I would uh, put these onto cue cards, get some definitions, write some examples. But what we're gonna do here is we're really quickly just gonna write down all of our rotor parameter formulas. Uh, and then at the end, we'll have a big formula sheet. So first up, really important thing when it comes to rotor parameters is our synchronous speed. Synchronous speed is the speed of the rotor, right? We can get that by taking the source frequency, 60 hertz here in North America, times 120, divided by the number of poles, right? So 60 times 120, it's a four pole motor, divided by four, 1800, perfect. Synchronous speed, speed of the rotor or stator rotating magnetic field. Then we get our slip speed. Right, with slip speed, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our sink speed and we are going to minus our rotor speed. And that's gonna give us the difference between our synchronous speed and our rotor speed. Then it comes to our slip, arguably the most important thing with rotor parameters. Our slip, we are gonna go and slip. So our slip speed divided by our synchronous speed. Awesome. So all of those have to do with speed. Within a rotor, it's very important that we remember that our resistance, our R, inside the rotor is a constant value, right? It is not changing as that rotor speed changes. What will be changing, however, is the voltage inside the rotor, the frequency inside the rotor, the reactance inside the rotor, the impedance inside the rotor, the current inside the rotor, and the power factor inside the rotor will all be changing proportionally to that slip, right? So let's talk about how all of these change. So voltage is directly proportional, which means that it will just be the voltage of the blocked rotor times slip. Now, blocked rotor is when that rotor is not spinning. It's zero RPM. It's at a standstill, and my stator is spinning at 100% or my synchronous speed, so that's a slip of 100% is my blocked rotor voltage. Frequency, same thing, directly proportional. Blocked rotor frequency times slip. Blocked rotor frequency is always your source frequency. So here in North America, 60 hertz. Rest of the world, bunch of places, I don't know, 50 hertz somewhere else. It's that. Reactance is your blocked rotor reactance times slip. So the three of those are directly proportional, okay? Awesome. Now the impedance of our rotor. We're just gonna use Pythagorean's theorem. R squared plus X squared, although we're using R of the rotor and X of the rotor to get our impedance of the rotor. So again, this one is proportional, but not directly. So it's not a straight line with slip, but it will you know, decrease with slip. As slip decreases, it'll decrease. As slip increases, it'll increase. But it's not directly proportional, right? It's not a one for one. Same thing with current here. We're gonna go voltage of the rotor divided by impedance of the rotor. Classic, Ohm's law, gotta love it. Then we have power factor. Our power factor of the rotor is the resistance of our rotor divided by the impedance of our rotor, right? So the in-phase component and the hypotenuse of that rotor triangle. Whew. That was fast, that's okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Perfect, two to go. So what's most important inside a rotor is what we call the active current, right? So we can call it the IR active. Right? Or IRR, you'll see a bunch of different things. But this is the actual current inside the rotor that is generating torque. It's the one that's getting that rotor to spin. So we're going to take the total current of the rotor, multiply it by our power factor. Okay, that's how we get the active current because it's the in phase component or what would be that resistive component there. Awesome. 
The very last thing I want to talk about is not really a formula, it's a concept. And it is the concept of breakdown torque. Okay, torque breakdown or breakdown torque. That's the peak amount of torque. It's the most torque that that motor is going to produce. And it happens at a different point in each motor depending on the resistance and the other qualities inside that rotor. So you can check out the video on torque curves below. Um, but torque breakdown occurs occurs when my power factor equals 0 0.707 or when my R of my rotor equals my X of my rotor. Same point. That's when that torque breakdown is going to occur. Uh, so thanks for coming to this super quick video. All of the formulas that you need in order to solve your rotor parameter questions. Have a great day.